And ultimately, you could use it for for game processing, cutting you know notches and fireboards, score cutting around trees. It works like a little saw. It's it's kind of like a little multi tool that also allows you to carry some glue and even carry some cordage. It is what I would say the first knife that you should really be carrying with you when you are out in the bush. Probably 18 or 19 years ago is when I first started um, working with a pitched blade knife. Now, a pitched blade knife is not something that you know I personally created. It uh, was something I experimented with uh, during that time frame when when my flint napping was, I don't want to say uh, crude, but it's not where I am today. I could still create thin blades. I could still get. Uh, some really fine points, atlatl dart points and arrowheads. It was one of those things where, you know, my flint napping has been an evolution and that pitch blade was part of that evolution. This right here is a pitch blade of mine that uh, I used extensively um, for a good, uh, you know, a good chunk of time. Um, God, like I said, 18, 19, maybe even 20 years ago. Now what this is, is a simple stone blade that I napped. The handle is made of uh, pine pitch glue and I've wrapped some dog bang cordage around here. So what this really gives me is a decent length of, of blade, uh, a nice handle, it gives me the ability to cut notches and fireboards, uh, do all sorts of game processing. It's great for cutting plant fibers. Um, it is essentially that little pocket knife that I would have in the form of a pitch blade. I call it a pitch blade essentially because it is a blade with some sort of pine pitch or some sort of resin based handle or nub that you can really grab onto. On this one, I actually you know, heated up the pitch and wrapped some dog bang cordage around it. Now this isn't process cordage, it's just twisted so it doesn't come undone. In this right here, I have a blade, I have glue and I have cordage all in one simple little tool. I still use this type of blade today but it's become a little bit more elaborate. It's come a little bit more refined just in my experiences over the years crafting these and using them. Really utilize that pitch, that nub that it creates to really have a good hold on your hand. Now I have processed game with just simple stone flakes before and I can tell you, you're gonna wind up walking away with little cuts on your hands. It's just part of that experience of butchering game with a stone flake. This can help avoid some of those cuts. The reason why it's a good thing to avoid is, you know, if you got open cuts on your hands and you're dealing with you know, an animal's blood, it's, it's, it's various, you know, liquids that are in its body. You really want to avoid potentially giving yourself some sort of infection in the hand, especially if you're out in the bush. Now you can see even on this stone flake, I mean, there's nothing but cutting edges the whole way around. If I'm holding this in my hand and I'm really trying to hoik down on, you know, cutting through a tendon or a piece of hide, this is going to create some issues and I'm definitely going to run the risk of cutting myself. A pitch blade, just like this, I greatly reduce it. Now, you can even see from this one, it's been worked. There's been big flakes taken off and it's even lost its original shape. It was a little bit more symmetrical, but over time and use, you know, it gets used. Well, I mean, what are you gonna do with it? When I made this, it was based off of trying to reduce the cuts in my hand and giving myself a little bit something easier to grab onto when I was, you know, cutting a notch in a fireboard. In that process of using it, I thought to myself, can't be the one who is, first thought of this or first really you know created putting pitch on a blade and using it as a knife so i did some research and you know at that time i learned that there was a style of blade called the lalyri knife that really originated in australia papua new guinea as well as papua that overall region now this is a pre-contact knife so i believe it was captain cook first landed in australia around 1770 these knives were noted there. They probably extend way back in a time. It is very something uh, traditional in Australia, but theirs is a little bit different than the ones that uh, you know I experimented with so many years ago and still use today. So these are the Leary knives, and essentially it is a little bit of pitch at the end of a blade. Typically their blades have three sides. So you have your, your ventral side, which is that smooth side, which is indicative of a flake being removed from a core or just a discoidal flake. And then you have typically one to two other sides. So it's kind of a three-sided blade that again was, you know, hafted, if you will, or given a, a handle with some sort of uh, resin, Spinifax, some of the various resins that exist in Australia. Again, this is one of those technologies that was used uh, all the way up until pre-contact times in Australia. So, I mean, if it worked, um, why not continue to use it? So 
I've experimented with making a couple of these. They're very effective tools. Personally, I still like my style of pitch knife that has a little bit more of a blade profile to it. It has that resin. You can wrap some cordage around there. Just kind of simply reheat it lightly and then you can unwrap that cordage. But this is a very effective tool. I'm actually gonna be using one of these in another bison experiment um, in the butchering process. Just a straight pitch knife and uh, I'll get into a bison. But I'm gonna show you how to make one. Extremely easy, not a lot to it. But one of the extra benefits that I like to say to using a pitch knife is, is that you can have a blade. And this is a blade I used recently in a kind of a stone saw sort of example. This is just a simple blade. It works great for cutting. One thing, as I was cutting this piece of wood in this video, I could feel these sharp little teeth and edges just digging into my hand. I thought, why didn't you wrap some pitch on there and give yourself a little bit more control? More importantly with the pitch, even though this is my blade, I want it small, I want it compact. I can't extend the blade, I can extend the knife out by taking that pitch and drawing it out maybe a half inch behind it, giving myself a little bit more of a handle. So that right there is definitely a good example of one of the macro blades or one of the long blades that they would pull off. I definitely have my three sides. In this case, it's very likely they would um, do a couple different things. They kind of, you know, pick which end is going to be the best uh, to hold onto. Just by looking at this, I would say I would probably pitch right here because it's a little bit thinner. One huge cutting edge right here. Nice elongated blade like this. That's what uh, a lot of those O'Leary knives are based off of. How I like to make my actual pitch blades is actually napping out a, a bifacial form like this, giving it some nice worked edges, giving it that uh, pitch handle. Don't get me wrong, this is still a great tool to butcher with, but having that little handle on there is just going to give me something else to grab onto. Now to do this, you need some pine pitch glue. I've got videos on here, I believe some YouTube shorts and even some long form videos on pine pitch glue, so check those out. Now, if you got pitch in a ball, pitch in a stick, it doesn't really matter as long as it's a good pitch, it's not crumbly, it's not too fragile, it's not gonna collapse in your hand, and you have a source of heat to heat your pitch, you will have no issues. Now, just looking at this blade right off the bat, I've got a little bit more rounded in. I've got my pointier end right here. This is where I'm gonna throw my pitch looking to elongate the handle out to about right here. Now the beautiful part is uh, the pitch amount is really up to you. To give yourself a better grip, you can kind of really design and put your pitch on there how you want. Now obviously if this was um, you know, some sort of container and I was able to dip the pitch in there, it'd be a lot easier, but I kind of like to do a little bit more uh, smoother approach. It gives me just a little bit of an opportunity to kind of really focus on how I want my handle to go and what's going to work best in my hand. So once I've got a good amount of pitch on there, I'm going to kind of let it get to that air dry point. Just give it a little breath. I'm looking, I'm tapping in my hand, see if it's sticking to the inside of my hand. It's not. That means it's a little bit malleable. I can, I can start to kind of shape it out. I just kind of start working it around the edge, around that base, and I'm going to kind of create that that first, you know, handle uh, shape, if you will. I have a little bit of a, a lip on mine. It gives me like a little bit of a finger weld to hold on to. This first pass, I'm gonna try to make it as smooth as possible. The reason being, all this pitch is gonna allow the other pitch to really kind of grab on and seat itself on there. All right, looking good for that first go. So I'm looking to ultimately just create a little bit of a handle profile. Something that if it's gonna be riding in my hand, it's gonna feel good. But that first amount of pitch is really just kind of giving me my idea where I want that handle to kind of start, how high I want it to rise up onto the blade. And I wanna make sure that it's got a little bit of a ridge to hold on to. Still have the flame. What I'm looking really to do now that I have my first layer of pitch on there is just drip this on. And that's gonna allow me to control where the pitch is going, and then allow me to start to draw out that handle. All right, 
little funky shape on there. Obviously, this is going to be a lot easier if I'm dunking it in something, but, you know, containers. What are we going to do with them? Test it in the hand. It's not sticking too much. Good. And once you start getting kind of an irregular shaped handle on there, this is where you start really keying in on the sides and the top. So you flip it this way, squeeze, you're draw, drawing it out, creating a little bit of a profile. I like to have a rounded end, feels better on the palm. Once I've kind of got a general kind of following profile, I'll come back with my thumbnail and I'll just push a little bit of that pitch back, give me a little bit more of a ridge. Just makes it a little bit easier to hold on to. Perfect, it's looking good. All right, so we'll let this guy dry now. We wanna make sure that it's gonna dry exactly in the shape that we want it. And mine's got that little bit of taper. And my blade actually ends about right here in the pitch, but I've extended it all the way out and give myself a little bit longer handle. All right, and when everything is said and done, you have a great little handle uh, for your blade. You have a pitch knife. Now, one reason why I think this is a smart thing to carry with you. Imagine if you will, in the craziest of circumstances, you have to craft uh, some sort of, you know, atlatl or some sort of thrusting spear. With this style of pitch knife, I already have all of the mechanisms needed. Literally, I could take a spear, cut a notch in it, heat this up right over a fire, jam it right in that half point, and I now have the ability to take what once was a knife and turn it into a spear. If I have cordage around here, like I have on my old one. I could take that cordage off, use it as a binding in conjunction with the pitch that's actually on this blade, and I have a pretty reliable means of adapting a pitch knife into a thrusting spear, an atlatl dart, uh, you know, foreshaft shaft or a fixed point on an atlatl dart. But with this, I have the means of quickly gluing this potential projectile point with some refinement into a shaft, getting it into an action. If I ever needed to quickly glue up an arrow point or patch up a hole in a gourd canteen, I could heat up a little bit of this end, smear it on there, patch it in, and I'm good to go. This is the pitch knife that I have adapted over time from those early phase O'Leary knives to even my early phase pitch knife to this guy right here. Plus, you have an adaptable knife that can go in many different directions when needed and if needed. That's it. One pitch knife. Thanks for watching.